In this video, we're going to have a quick introduction to the import node. So we can do all sorts of simple things in Embergen when we use simple primitive shapes and using those primitive shapes as either emitters or as colliders. But at some point, you're going to want to step up your game a little and maybe bring in some, some meshes and models that you've made in other applications. Maybe you've got uh, a model of an environment with a specific shape and you need some fog to roll through, say, a valley or something or you've got an animated character and you want to throw some fire effects onto their arms and legs. This is where the import node enters the game. So to use the import node, we're going to need some geometry first. We're not going to make that in Embergen. We're going to shoot on over to Blender. So here's a scene I've thrown together in Blender. Uh, I've got a ground plane here. Uh, I have warped it a little bit with some distortion, so it's a little bit bumpy. Uh, that should give us some nice effects when these rigid bodies fall onto it. They won't just fall flat. Uh, they'll bumble around a bit. If we play it through real quick, yeah, we've got some interesting movement there, so we can have some fun with this in Embergen. So first thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to select everything there. I'm going to go up to File, Export, down to FBX. Now before I hit Export, I'm going to check Bake Animation, Disable NLA Strips and All Actions. Leaving those on, you can get some undesirable results. So just untick them and all should be well. I'm also going to make sure I set selected objects that are on. Give it a name. And the export goes through really quickly. So back into Embergen. We are going to want rather than a primitive shape. Let's bring this out from here. And we're going to use our import node. Now there's a bunch of different nodes coming off of this, but we'll go over them in a moment. First thing we want to do is find the FBX that we just exported from Blender is our FBX. So sometimes when you import these things, they might be too large, too small, really depends on how you scale things both in Embergen and in Blender. There's a really handy utility where you can scale and center to fit, which is pretty useful. All right, so let's play this back really quick. Just check that the animation has been brought across inside of our FBX file. It all seems good. Now it's playing back at a slower speed. We're going to go over that a little bit later, but first we're going to get some emitters and colliders set up. So clicking on your import node, we have these masks that are available. And on each mask, you can enable or disable a different piece of this FBX. All the separate meshes are listed in here. So let's use the plane for mask one. For mask two, we're going to select everything else. And while you're doing that, you'll notice that also you've got the ability to select individual bones as well as meshes. You can also select things based on their vertex coloring. But in this case, I'm just going to use the individual meshes and select those individually. So just for starters, we've got mask one and mask two. Mask one is our ground plane. Mask two are all of the falling objects. Let's set mask one as a collider. Pull this out, pop it in here. And I've got a very simple uh, volume emitter set up over here, and we're going to use mask two for that. So our objects should be on fire, and our ground plane should be a collider for that fire. Now it seems to work quite well. But there is something slightly amiss. If I go right back to the beginning and see if you notice it. And that's that the fire starts to form as the animation starts. That could be a problem if you are working on uh, a visual effects shot where you've got three or four shots and something already needs to be on fire. There already needs to be some, some motion to that effect as well. So we've got like a, a pre-roll function here in the import node. So if we head to playback inside of the import node, we have a frame delay. I'm going to punch in, say, 60 here. So the animation should stop for the first 60 frames. It'll be frozen on that very first frame of the FBX animation, but the simulation will run. So the fire will start to form on the frozen geometry, and then the playback will start on that frozen geometry at frame 60. And that's working as expected. So when we start, we've already got fire on our objects. So let's talk about the tough bit, and that's frames per second, you know, uh, how fast our simulation is running in Embergen, our, our time step. Um, and 
you know, how these things affect uh, how many frames we're exporting and how we're going to get this to match up with our original animation. So in this example, our end result is that I'm going to export this animation from Blender and I'm also going to export the render from Embergen. I'm going to composite them together, but I need the frame sequences to match up. If they don't match up, then it's just going to look rubbish. Nothing, Nothing's going to connect. So I need to export something that works at 24 frames per second, but we need to bear in mind that Embergen itself is running at 60 frames per second, 60 hertz. This is our time step here. Now, Embergen works best at 60 hertz. It's kind of wired this way. Um, in fact, although you can change this, you know, you, we could drop this down to, to 24 or something if we wanted, but the fire would look weird. It wouldn't look natural. It wouldn't animate properly. Uh, and likewise, you know, if, if we if we made this larger, you know, up to 120 or something, everything would appear to be really, really slow. The further you get away from 60, the more unnatural things are going to look and uh, the more unpredictable they're going to act. Noise, for instance, acts totally differently. So we're going to try and keep this 60 hertz or close to, and we're going to make changes to our render node and our import node. Before we make any changes, let's look at the formula that we'll set up. The formula says, your override FPS, that's the saying over here in the import node, override FPS, we're going to stick this on. So override FPS multiplied by your frame stride, which is over here in the render dialog, that's this guy here, should equal your time step. And the time step is set here in simulation. So if this is 60, uh, let's say for instance, I was working with a 30 frames per second animation. I would say, okay, play this at 30. This is set to 60, my frame stride would be two. Okay, Embergen would process 60 frames, but only export 30 of them every other frame. Now we want a 24 frames per second animation. Uh, and the formula for that is to actually bump up the simulation to 72, not too far from 60. To set our frames per second for playback of the FBX to 24. And then for our frame stride to be three. Now, if we look at our render duration in the timeline, that now actually matches up. So the number of frames being exported would be equal to the number of frames that were brought in on that FBX. They literally match up. So if I were to export that, that would hook into a backplate that I'm rendering out of Blender, which is actually already rendered. If we go to render, view the animation. Super simple, not super pretty to look at, but you know, it's some geometry, it's falling and it's rendered and we're gonna place our Embergen export over the top of this and it's gonna match up because we've got the formula in action, you know, we've, we've done the math and it works. So there's no fire here. We have brought that into After Effects and that's our back plate right here. And we're just gonna double check our settings in Embergen. So our simulation is set to 72 Hertz. Our frames per second playback is 24 for our FBX, making sure the override FPS is on, otherwise this won't show up. In our render node, number of frames, 360, frame stride is three. There's one more thing to go over, and that is that in Blender, we have got a camera setup, which is right here. So if I view this through the camera, and this is the one that we saw when we checked the animation, it's the one that we rendered with. So when we exported everything out to Embergen, we actually took the camera with it. Uh, and that's you know one of the reasons that this, this import node exists, so you can move camera animation over to Embergen. Uh, and that shows up here. So it gets detected in the FBX. We can shunt this into a camera, camera node here. Uh, this camera goes into our render. So now our render tab knows what to look through. Uh, it doesn't carry across the display resolution. So it's gonna be 920 by 1080. And let's just go back to the beginning here. And what we should see Although we can't see the geometry because I've set it to hold out, but we should see the fire and it should match up with what we were seeing before. Yeah, there we go. So this animation here, making sure I've got straight blending mode in alpha, is going to match up exactly with this animation here. So we're going to render them out. We're going to comp them together in After Effects real quick. It 
if you um if you find you're getting uh some weirdness happening with holdout uh, especially when you're using the import node um, you can try checking a couple of things in here which i'll show you in a sec um, they can govern the the visibility of the imported meshes So just to jump back on the, the holdout issue, um, it's something that trips me up from time to time and I, I forget it's there. So if you find that um, you're rendering but your shapes aren't there to hold the flames out, um, this this would look entirely wrong if you were to try and comp this because the, the flames behind the objects would be showing up on top of the objects. You don't want that. You want uh, at the ember gen stage to actually block some of that light out. Um, and it seems kind of counterintuitive until you start thinking like the application. If you decide not to render the geometry, then Embergen doesn't know to uh, block light with it. So make sure you've got render all on, and then over in your render node that you've got holdout set on, and it will use that geometry to block light and not render what's behind it. So. Let's head back into After Effects where we've got our backplate. Uh, let's just refresh this because they are old versions of the render. And then we'll start turning them on. So looks like this without, looks like this with. So that matches up. I've got a second layer there. And that's really just to pump up the brightness on the flames a little and darken down the smoke a little. So you see that it doesn't really skip a beat. It's It's all matched up. I mean, it's not the highest quality sim, uh, and there's a bunch of things that we could do to make this look a hundred times better. So we could have some light interaction between, you know, the flames in the ground and the smoke in the ground as well. But this is really just a, a proof of concept to show you how it works and get these two things married together. But yeah, there you go. That's that's really it in a nutshell. Um, there's loads of other things that you can do with the import node, uh, and they really deserve their own video, to be honest. These are the very basics of how you would import some animated geometry, um, assign them to be emitters or colliders, and how to render them out if it's animated at uh, you know something other than 60 FPS. So just remember the formula and remember the rough workflow. So build your geometry, bring it in with the import node, decide what's going to be an emitter, what's going to be a collider. Don't forget to bring your camera in if you've got uh, some animated camera motion, and then bring up your handy cheat sheet created by Will, I believe, uh, of what to do with regards to timing. So remember, try and stick close to 60. If you're gonna move it, don't move it by a great deal. Remember to override FPS if you've got animated geometry. Okay, in this case, that was 24 FPS. I set up a frame delay to allow the fire to start simulating before the geometry started to move. And then also in our render node, we set up the frame stride to three. So just to go over that formula one more time, it's override FPS set in here, which is 24, times by your frame stride here, which is three, equals our simulation time step 72 hertz. And as you can see on the, the cheat sheet that Will's provided, um, you know, there's a bunch of different options there, depending on the, the frames per second of whatever video you're working on. I'm guessing if it's 60 FPS or 30 FPS, it's actually pretty easy. Of course, it's, it's easy to get a little bit confused on that one, um, but just download a copy of the cheat sheet, use it if you need it. If you get stuck at all, just jump into the Discord uh, and, and start mentioning it. I'm sure Will or myself will jump on it and, and start helping you out. Uh, in the meantime, if you get any uh, questions or requests, get in touch on Discord, reach out, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. See you in the next video.